Hey everybody, this is Brian back with Inspiring How You See That. We're the channel that talks about all different kinds of music and entertainment, brings you inspirational stories, and talks with some of your favorite artists. Today I'm very pleased to have my good buddy Jared Cunningham from Monarchs to Oblivion. Jared, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me, man. This is uh, this is always one of my favorite events to come to. I always look forward to seeing you over here. So it's, Absolutely. It's good. I'm glad we get to do it. Likewise, man. And we should say we're at Kingdom Come Festival here in Indiana. Yep. And uh, you actually joined Monarchs to Oblivion, was it last year? Uh, yeah, so it was just about a year ago now, uh, I think the week or two before KCF last year, I had been out a couple times kind of trying out, still not official, and uh, um, went back about a week or so after KCF, and, you know, they decided to make the announcement and join in. So, yeah, it's been about a year now, and, it's uh, dude, it's been the best thing I've ever done. It's cool. Nice. And you're the lead guitarist, correct? Uh, no, so, I mean... We have two guitar players, both me and JD. Um, he's probably plays more of the lead stuff than I do. Okay. Um, but um, yeah, so he used to play bass, and then when um, they had a little shuffle, I joined the band. He decided to go back to playing guitar. So now we've got two guitar players. Uh, all of our new stuff we're writing has a lot of you know dueling parts and a couple things. It's been really nice. fun to try to write some stuff and uh, kind of duel out some harmonies and some things. So it's been a lot of fun. Nice. Now, were you part of other bands before? Or were you just kind of a uh freelance player? Uh, yeah, so no, I wasn't. Um, I was going to say, I've, I'm 23. I moved to Columbus a couple years ago for uh, just for my day job and uh, just was playing in church settings and things like that here and there and always kind of loved the metal scene and that was what I grew up in, you know, and I just, I was always wanted to do more of something like that and I got to a point about April of last year that I was like, you know, this church thing was, the situation I was in was a little frustrating both with music and the church I was at. And I was like, man, I called my dad one afternoon. I was like, man, I'm like, I just, I, I'm just frustrated. Like, I, I want to play music at a better level. And I just, I want to, I want to do something different, but I don't know what that looks like. And, uh, you know, he told me, man, just pray about it and just, you know, keep your eyes open and look for stuff. And um, a friend of mine called me and said, hey, I'm putting on an event over in uh, Logan, Ohio last year. And it was uh, Soberfest last year and uh, it was chaotic resemblance three days under safe kept and a band i hadn't heard of at the time called monarchs to oblivion and so checked them out talked to jd and not about 10 days went by they posted an ad for looking for a guitar player and texted him and long story short here we are so nice. it's uh, it was definitely a god thing and um i feel i feel really happy where i'm at and it's been a lot of fun it's amazing how god works like that you know through through frustration and through something that's like man there's something missing and it's He's just like, just wait, trust me, be patient. And Absolutely. That's incredible. You know, you can make a movie about that. You're like the fan who becomes part of the band. <laughs> who's so who, who's playing me, you think? Ooh, that's a good question. Who, who would you want to play you? That's Who's the best lead guitarist out there? Let's see here. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> play yourself. It'll be a biopic. Just play there yourself. We go. There you go. <laughs> Autobiography. <laughs> no, that's awesome. Congratulations. Thank so you, yeah. it, it, It's really because... You know, we've been friends for a couple of years, seeing yeah. you here, and that scene when you joined a band, I'm like, that's, I was really proud of you, that, that's awesome. So. Thanks, that means a lot, yeah. Absolutely, so you are playing a number of festivals, you were telling me, mm -hmm. coming up, so where else are you guys going to be playing at? Uh, yeah, so later this summer, uh, next month, we're down in Missouri playing Chains Unchained, um, really looking forward to that, never been to that festival, playing with a couple of my favorite bands too, Convictions, Relent, Bread for War, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, we're playing Rockin' the River in Arkansas in September, um, Stonewall Static and a couple others, man. I, I saw those guys last night. They killed it. Um, so then we're doing that. Uh, we've got um, a show local to us in Columbus at the King of Clubs uh, with uh, Liliac in October that nice. we're really, really looking forward to. Our uh, good so, friends, Liliac. Say hi to you so, guys out there. Heck yeah, man. Looking forward to meeting those guys and playing with them. Been a fan of them for a while, so that's that's going to be awesome. Nice. Um, yeah, we've got, a, we've got a busy year coming up. So. So when did it hit you? When did you get the realization that you went from a fan to now you are part of this world? That's That's got to be an incredible feeling. You know, I think the moment for me, because uh, the first show that I played last summer with uh, Monarchs was um, with a band called Under the Blood. It was a little bit of a local thing. We played a campground uh, revival, and it was a lot of fun. Um, but I think the moment it became real for me was uh, when we played Soberfest last year with one of my favorite bands, Chaotic Resemblance. Because uh, I remember I used to go around traveling all over the place to go see them. And um, here I was sound checking with them. And uh, I think that was Picture the moment. Yourself. Oh, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> dude. Like, I was I was so nervous. I'm standing there playing, and, you know, Travis and L.A. are in front of me that I used to run around hours to go see. And they're, you know, watching me play. <laughs> it just... That, I think that was the moment it hit me. Sure. It was, it was, I was on the other side of the stage, and um, I, I, 
it still hasn't it still hasn't changed the shows that I've played everywhere and it's it doesn't get old for me I, I don't take it for granted I love it nice and we were talking before you've become fans with the duo Renee the sister duo <laughs> yeah yeah so kind of tell us a little about how you came to know them yeah uh, well, <laughs> well starting about chaotic um, <laughs> I uh, I think it was 2020 uh, I went over to uh, Rock on Winter in Indiana and uh, was going to go see Chaotic Resemblance. Uh, I'd only ever seen them once before that and you know they were from Oklahoma and I was still living in West Virginia where I grew up at the time and you know I had a couple guys that were going to come with me that ended up not and I was kind of like ah do I want to go by myself you know it's a long drive I'm like yeah I'll just go and because I really wanted to see them. I got over there and I'm standing there and these uh, these two girls got on stage before Chaotic and um, just you know, acted like they owned the place, and they had this flair and style about them, and they were really good. Their voices blended, and I was like... A little di- different music than yeah, Chaotic. A little, little, little different little different music than Chaotic, yeah. And um, and I was like, I just remember going like, whoa, these guys are good. And uh, got talking to them, and met them, and just kind of have been ever since, and you know, and uh, they, you know, I've been to several of their shows the last couple of years, and then getting to see them on Winter Jam and do some stuff, and... Uh, that was a lot of fun getting to see them on a huge stage and things making a big break. You know, they signed with Goatee Records this past spring. Yeah. And uh, so it's been really cool to just kind of watch them blow up because I know how good they are and how real they are and how, how great they are. But, yeah, they uh, they contacted me one week and they said, hey, do you want to come out and play a show with us? And I, I think that was about the fastest I've ever responded to a text. I was like, yeah, absolutely. So, um, went out and uh, we played a couple shows and um, it was a lot of fun, man. I can't brag on them enough. Nice. Now, now, I do want to ask you a, a couple more questions before we end. One, what has been the most surprising thing? I mean, transitioning from, like we talked about, being mm-hmm. a fan to being in a band. What's the one thing that has surprised you more than anything about that? Um, you know, I don't know. Um, like, I kind of grew up around this. Like, even when I was a little kid, like, my dad was always working some of these shows type like this in some capacity. Okay. Whether he knew the promoters and we were helping out with stuff or he was working compassion tables or doing things like that. Um, you know, even when I was, you know, six and seven years old, we were going to see Skillet and Disciple and Seventh Day Slumber and everybody in Fire Flight and everybody else back then. And, you know, went to Ichthus Festival in Kentucky and ran around for four days and saw everybody I ever wanted to see. And nice. So, I mean, I, I think for me, like, it was, a, it, it was a little bit less of a, you know, curtain pull back into okay. the world because I just I kind of grown up around kinda it to some level it, yeah um, but I think the biggest part of it was just like I knew a lot of the behind the scenes stuff that goes into a lot of this I think I knew less about like just the day to day life of like how that works especially for like a band like us where we don't do this like full time sure and so we've got you know we're juggling schedules uh, you know we've and got jobs a, and, and jobs we've got to you know travel and pay for gas and show up and so I think for me it was more of the like not nitty gritty because I really do like everything about it. I can't get enough of being around all of it, whether I'm a fan or helping out other friends or playing or anything. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think it was a big shock for me. I think it was just a, you know, I feel like a kid on Christmas getting to be a part of it still. So that's awesome. I love it. And then the last thing I want to ask you is there's probably a lot of people out there, young kids, older, who they're thinking their dreams are on the table. Mm-hmm. You know, it's something that's, it's, it's fanciful. It'll never happen. You're kind of living your dream right now. So what advice would you give people if they think what they want to do is unattainable? 100%. Like, well, and, and for me, you know, growing up, you know, watching everybody, you know, that I liked on stage all the time, um, you know, I would just say that keep doing what you want to do and um, do it, especially for me, do it in the name of Jesus and do it for the right reasons. And don't be afraid to, you know, go out and meet some people and stick your neck out and things happen um, because, you know, for me, that was always one of my dreams was to, you know, I wanted to be on the stage. You know, I was always in the front row, but I always wanted to be on the stage. And I think for me, it was always kind of like, it wasn't like I thought that it was, oh, it was unattainable. I'll never get there. It was more of a, like, I don't think I ever really thought that I would be doing it. Sure. Um, and for me, it was, it just kind of happened. And, and, you know, I don't say that to say like, you know, like, oh, I, you know, I just got lucky. Like, no, I mean, there was a lot of work and things that went on behind the scenes and, you know, when that opportunity presented itself, you know, I I called, you know, JD and the Monarchs guys and, you know, worked for about a month there learning a few songs and up in my game of, you know, playing guitar and things and um, to be able to that point. So I would just I would just say to everybody, you know, that thinks your dreams are unattainable, A, they're not, I promise you. Um, just come talk to me. Um, but keep doing what you're doing and what you love doing and do it in the name of Jesus and, you know, don't be afraid to stick your neck out and take some opportunities because 
things that I'm doing now, I, like, were beyond my imagination of what I could be doing. Uh, yeah. Cool. So it, it's just keep it up. That's awesome. Thank you for that. And again, it, it's so cool seeing this happen. We're excited to see what's next for you. Thank you. And man. Jared, thank you again for spending this time with us. Is there anything else you'd like to say to fans before we leave? Um, I don't think so, man. Brian, thank you so much for having Absolutely, me. You know, man. I love really to hang out with you. And, Absolutely. Yeah, man. Um, everybody that's missing out on KCF or that you're here, come check out you all these it. bands and all these guys. Everybody here is just super real it's and super family. great. It it's, really is. Everybody calls it a family reunion yeah. every year. Last year was the first year I got to come to Kingdom Come Festival in person, and that was the first year I'd been, and it was a family yeah. reunion. Like, so it, it doesn't get overhyped. It's the best. <laughs> Absolutely. Again, thank you so much. Thank you. And as always, we want to thank you guys for spending this time with us. We love you all. God bless and rock on.